All right, now, this is just about at the point where I'm gonna start my sanding process. Okay, you'll see that this side is fairly round. This side's better round, but I can, I can fine tune that with the sandpaper. Now the first grit of sandpaper I wanna use is 80 grit. And I always fold my sandpaper into three so it won't slide around on me. About this size sandpaper is the correct size for this size old weed. And I'm gonna hold it like this and start rubbing that area that was once the Vesica Pisces and blending it on both sides. And I wanna do that to all four of these. And that will help uh, get any flatness off of it. And what I'm doing with the sandpaper is just doing some fine tuning to the shape. I really want it to be round on the, on one, on the top here. So it needs to have a little bit of extra uh, work. Just tuning it up. There it is, it's a little, there, that's pretty good. And you don't need to go very long with this on, on um, on substone because it really works fast, 80 grit sandpaper. And if you go too long, you'll end up with a concave area and you don't want anything concave. We mentioned before. And what you're doing is you're looking for what marks the rasp left on the stone and you're basically just erasing those rasp marks. And you're keeping an eye on the symmetry of everything while you're doing it. This is actually quite pleasant uh, to do this. I enjoy this part of it the best, I think, is the, the beginning sanding. And you can see that this side, this side here, it's a little flat. So I'm gonna work on this one Vesica Pisces here just a little bit more. So get rid of that mark and get rid of that flatness. You don't wanna leave any of the scratches from the previous step. So the previous step was rasping. I don't want to have any marks left from the rasp. Now I'll have a lot of scratches on there from this, from this sandpaper, but the next step sandpaper will erase these scratches and so on until we get about five or six different grades of sandpaper and we'll be polishing it at that point. The last couple of grades of sandpaper, uh, I use a wet dry sandpaper that I can get wet and that uh, water helps to polish it as well. <clears throat> now, while I'm sanding this, I'm looking for symmetry still. And I'll try to hold this up so you can see it. That in any direction you look at it, it looks symmetrical, okay? Now, I don't use any measuring tools at this point. I'm just using my eye. Um, the only measuring tools I ever use on it is actually in the beginning when I was first starting to cut. And, and one of the measuring tools is my finger. So, but having that right proportion of the, the sides to the length is critical. You don't have that proportion right, it's not gonna turn out like this. It'll turn out something like this, similar, but not a true Oloe. And I'm just about ready to go to the next great sandpaper. I don't see any scratches from the rasp left. Um, this, the symmetry is looking pretty good to me. Now this particular substone, it has one little tiny piece right here that's harder than the other parts of it. You'll see it's kind of a darker color. And it's funny because uh, it's harder so it doesn't sand away as easy as the area around it. So you have to be careful with those little spots. They do show up from time to time. Some unfortunate people have them all over their projects, all over the stone, and it's frustrating to say the least, but 
I tell the people that have those little spots on their stone, well, this is your karma in life, is to have these little hard things in your way. <laughs> of course, they never laugh about that. They don't think that that's very funny. All right, so now I'm going to... Um, I want to dust this off and see what it looks like. Oh! Now it's always good to have a, a bucket of water with a rag in it so that you can really see the scratches. And you see, you get more of the true color of what the stone's going to end up looking like. Now, this particular stone has some markings on it that are in the stone, they're not scratches. Okay? But you get an idea about the color it's going to be. And then now I'm going to move on to the next um, sandpaper, which is 120 in this case. And again, I'm going to spend a good amount of time getting those scratches out from the 80 grit. So each paper, you could probably sand for about 10 minutes. And that should be plenty of time. Each grade of paper. Of course. Putting the water on it, I'm really able to see the scratches. If it was dry, I wouldn't be able to see the scratches as good. So by having a little bit of that water on it, now I can see if I left any scratches from that 80 grit. Yeah, I see some there. Now I'm going to dry this off so it doesn't get my sandpaper wet. If your camera can pick it up, but there are you definitely can see the scratches in there, and the bigger scratches are from the 80 grit. And the 120 grit that I'm using right now is actually leaving scratches as well, but I'm not worried about those, I just want to get the 80s off the, the scratches from the 80 grit. Now don't be afraid to use new sandpaper if you're starting to get kind of worn out with your sandpaper. Um, always have plenty of sandpaper around and, and again, get the good quality sandpaper. Often you'll you'll find that you overlook this one little area in here, and you don't want to forget that because that's usually where at the end you see scratches there that you missed. So you really want to look carefully for scratches. 
before you move on to the next grade of paper. Like I said, it probably takes each grade of paper about 10, maybe 15 minutes. But you could definitely do it for a half an hour if you want. It's not gonna make it, make it uh, worse. It's gonna make it better. The more time, the better. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move up to the next grade. So 80, 120, 220. Now I'm gonna use this 320. So the sandpaper, um, you know, has varying degrees of fineness. You have the coarse one, which in this case is the 80 grit, is coarse. The next one is kind of a medium, and that's 120 in this case. The fine one is the 220. And as the number grows, the finer and finer it gets. So I'm using uh, 80, 120, 220, 320, 400. You'd think it's 420, but no. Um, and then 600 and then 800, okay? Now when I get into the 600 and 800 grit, uh, this is black, you see. Uh, that's because you can use it with water. So wet and dry sandpaper. This one is only, this yellow stuff is only for dry sanding. Otherwise it'll, it'll get all clogged up as I showed in that, this one here. See, it gets all clogged up. There's something about working with this stone and sanding this shape and holding it that's almost like meditating. You know, nice, quiet, focused work. It's very soothing. You know, I have high school students that do this that comment that that is one of the reasons that they really look forward to coming to my class uh, each week so that they can have this time, this quiet, reflective time where they can you know, just really get into their own their own hands and their own work. Now, other students will be talking and talking and talking during the whole process. That's fine. I got nothing against that. And in 12th grade, often what they're doing is they're reminiscing about their, their high school years. And some of them went to grade school you know, uh, together here at Highland Hall. So it's really kind of a beautiful time for the 12th grade they, they and I and I have them doing this in 12th grade um, they really love to do this and I have them write an essay at the end of the class to kind of summarize their experience and they often comment you know that this is their favorite art class that they've had all through their whole high school career and we have a lot of art classes here and they just, you know, some of them are so surprised when they work with the stone. They, re they they just don't even know that they love it so much until they try it. And then all of a sudden, now they're sold on it for life. I had one student, graduated a number of years ago, and she was so into her project that she, even though after she graduated, she kept coming back. Even after she was done and in college, she would keep coming back on Wednesdays. That's when we had our, our uh, stone carving elective. And she just kept working on that, that project that she was working on. And finally she finished it. But I thought that was quite impressive, you know, that she just wasn't done yet here and wanted to finish. All right, we're getting better. All right. Like I said, you know, you could just keep sanding and sanding for hours if you want. Um, I'm going a little bit faster than I normally would because, you know, we're filming this and there's only limited time we can use, but I do want it to be shiny when we're done and that takes being very, vigilant about these little scratches.
Okay. All right, now I'm going to move on to the 400 grit. And it's pretty fine. This is like super fine. But if you skip one of the one of the levels, what will happen is your stone won't shine as nicely and it'll be a little foggy looking. So you really want to take the time to do a, a really excellent job on the sanding of these scratches. I probably said that 20 times already in this video, but it can't be understated, that's for sure. Or overstated, actually. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get in here with the wet and dry sandpaper. Okay, and I'll go ahead and wipe this down again so I can look at it. Look, it's already starting to shine up a little bit with the water. Definitely will shine it. <laughs> All right, and go at it with this, this wet and dry. And it, what happens is it starts to make kind of a paste, you see. And sandpaper and that paste and the water all working together ends up polishing it. We don't use any of our tools to make these. It's all handwork. And this is my favorite part is when we're in the water, using the water. Okay, I think we're ready now to jump on into the final sandpaper, which in this case is 800. 800 grit, wet and dry. Oh yeah, really nice. I'm gonna try this thing off. And see if I can see any, any little scratches that I missed. step is just to use your hand to buff it out. And I'm rubbing it pretty hard and I'm gripping it quite hard but you can see the the shine coming up from just just the using the hand to buff it. Last bit. Now, the last, very last step is I have this beeswax polish, lemon lavender flavor, and I'm just going to put a dab on there and bring it up to a nice shine, just a dab, that's all you need. Now, it really brings out that color. This is a beautiful stone. I really like this. Soap stone. At this point, you might want to dry it just a tiny bit more, but you know, you, anytime you pick this up, you just go ahead and use your hand and rub it, and it'll bring that shine out again. And um, I'm calling this a finished project here. This is the old weed. So anyway, thanks for watching this. Um, hopefully you've learned something from it. You can always go back and review it again. If you get stuck in a spot and you forget what you're supposed to do, you back it up and pick it up from there. But, um, but this is pretty much a finished project. Now, I'll give you a little preview. We're going to do another one of these videos on the stone. Um, and in that video, I'm going to use this piece. Remember, we started with a cube, a big cube. We cut this piece off 
I'm gonna cut this piece off. Now I'm gonna cut this one in half. One of them, I'm going to make a sphere about like that. And the other piece, I'm gonna make a, a cup. It'll be a little bit bigger than this little cup. But I always have my students do um, a concave project and a convex project because um, that's really what sculpture is all about. It's, it's the interplay between the convex and the concave. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.